This is the one you have all been waiting for. I know it, you know it. It's also the one I've been waiting for. Finally have some story and themes to chew on with these games. That's where I have the most fun with these videos. So let's dive into the juicy world of cheating on your wife, but with your brother. Naughty has always been ahead of its time with accessibility features, pioneering opening the game up to not just people with disabilities, but people like me that just want to relax as I kill every single person with no remorse and not think too hard about it. Also, thank you for letting me tinker menu options before throwing me into the game. Uncharted 4 is going to have quite a bit of influence from The Last of Us, seen straight away from the skinny queen of a menu we got here, its focal point being the source of the treasure we're looking for and Nate's fate if he doesn't figure out his addiction. It's an Uncharted game. We gotta have some quote from an actual historical figure. The quote encapsulates what Nate has been throughout his entire journey as a treasure hunter. It's a double entendre in his case. He's never been the strongest, fastest, or skilled, but he has been the luckiest. He's never been the wealthiest, a womanizer, or famous, but has always had people to call family. And with these two things, Nate has always had a desire for more. When both collide with his brother returning, there is no choice to be made for him. We got a game centered around pirates, and wouldn't you know, we're starting as a captain of our own ship, and there's only two pirates on this vessel. Hmm. There are going to be quite a few parallels between Nate's story here and Avery's back in the day. Fake out we play as random balding guy? And in classic Uncharted fashion, we must start with some crazy action scene. Naughty Dog is just contractually obligated to start them like this. Cause you started the fight. He wouldn't give me back my book. Even at a young age, Nate has always been doing what he believes is right, even at the detriment to himself or others. Something he will struggle with throughout this entire game. The lure of adventure. Not only is it Nate's desire for, it's also his brother that's always drugged him along. You could see Nate's true surname being teased on this file. We've kind of all gathered by now Drake isn't truly his last name, but this game gives hints for those not privy. Young Nate's movement is unrefined, weighty, and slow. It's almost a little frustrating after playing the quick bounding Nate in the previous games, which leads me to say, mission accomplished, Naughty Dog. He's young, weak, and inexperienced, and that all comes across just through animation alone. <laughs> not even young Nate can get around everything breaking on his ass. Nathan, Nathan, come on, they're just saying it because it gets to you. Truer words. Now, I'm not saying I bully my friends, but I do f with them hard just because of their reaction. All I'm saying is when the drugstore taser comes out, you best tank it or I'm not gonna stop. I'll do as I say, not as I do. Yeah, you'll catch cold. From a traditional fatherly saying to a traditional mother's gesture, Sam's happy to play both sides of raising Nate. I'm gonna stay out of trouble. Uh, this is an exception. But he's still gotta play the bigger brother role, right? You ready for this? Hell yeah. You could really read this as it's always been Sam who's been the bad influence on Nate. Sure, Nate's always had the dog in him, punching a kid over a book, but Sam sprung him. Called him back later in his 40s, you get it. I think I'm gonna be talking about the animation work all video. It's industry leading, even back in 2016. It seriously looks like magic at times. I can't imagine the amount of dog years it took to get all this just right. Ah, welcome to Panama. We finally get to see what really went down in the Panamanian jail story. Naughty Dog took what was looked back on as more of a ha <laughs> remember that time moment into one of the most traumatic moments of Nate's life. And see the way Nate handles trauma and emotions? It's quite on brand that he downplay it. The pirate who pulled off the biggest heist in history and got away with it. That is actually true. Avery was only a pirate for two years, plundered the biggest score off the Mughal Empire and FO'd. I love taking real history and developers putting their own fictional spin on it all. Avery is the hands down the best they've done with that. It's not always that sequels in a series continually get better, but I'd argue that Uncharted is one of those series. You three haters are about to spring from the woodwork. I can already feel it. You know those The Last of Us influences I was talking about? Dumpsters for traversal. It's really interesting going from the weighty grounded nature of The Last of Us to soaring through the sky and climbing giant rock towers is Nate. A grappling hook is the best thing any game can add to its repertoire. Even the janky ones are fun. Uncharted climbing has always been a bit simple, but fluid enough to be fun still. Four adds a lot to create a more dynamic experience. We've got this amazing rope with more perfect animations. I mean, just look at the way it wraps around the pole with a host of different ways to use it too. It's not just for traversal, it's for combat, a puzzling tool and changing your environment, but nothing beats the dumb fun of grappling towards an enemy, giving him the elbow of destruction, follow through, and then taking his strap. Not gonna lie, <laughs> this is pretty awesome. Naughty Dog when they finally got the freak of nature rope working properly. Ooh, our first puzzle. Uncharted 4 is the goat in every pillar of which makes an Uncharted game. Let's start with puzzles. We've got a wide range of challenges when it comes to them. Some logic-based, which creates the best puzzles, some journal cheat code-based, 
and the one that feels like we're using our knowledge of pirate history when it's just another logic puzzle in disguise. And that's not a dig. I actually found myself stumped on this one for about 10 minutes because I'm an idiot. That's why. You guys know I'm bad at games. And the options the grappling hook presents for level design. Being able to repel up and down changed the game for what was possible. Fire's Dice, I freaking love that game. It seems that Sam has inherited the same luck gene. All threes is a pretty damn good hand. Huh. When we see them for the first time again, Nate has a wound on the same cheek as a flashback, showing us that even after all these years, these boys have not grown up. Digna factus recipimus. Nate scoffs at the rich boy who is playing pretend of being a treasure hunter. We receive, we receive the due rewards of our deeds. Yeah. Look at you. Sam comes in and shows him who's boss. Rafe's reaction here foreshadows his eventual desire to break out Sam and work solely with him. We receive, we receive the due rewards of our deeds. Yeah. And Rafe has done no deeds, just threw money at his problems or desires. But I'm not just going to complain and call Rafe a wannabe rich kid. I see him as a corrupted, tragic character. I'll elaborate more on that later. And... Looky here, boy! We've also got three men. Now, who's who is the fun question. I'm going to say that Nate is our main man, JC. Sam, the penitent one, and Rafe. The one who knocks. Mox, Mox, I mean. Nate's role as JC comes more into focus later after this prologue as he has put down the thieves' life for honest work. Before too long, he finds himself stuck between two thieves. And the framing of these three directly supports this, having the mocker on the left and the penitent on the right, just as Sam stated. Stay Who do you think you are? <laughs> these words work from both his crooked and warden side. Okay, you want to renegotiate? Fine, stop acting like a third world thug. Ironic, as later we'll see Rafe filled Vargas' shoes. And if you ever cross me in <laughs> Uncharted 4 takes a much different tone than the previous games. Or rather, chooses to take things much more seriously when needed. With the presentation of this scene, we can really feel the weight behind it. And maybe that just comes with the extreme high fidelity that makes Rafe look like... Such a gross man here. Was this part of the plan? Just follow me. It almost feels as if Rafe is trying to prove himself, not realizing that even though Nate has killed hundreds throughout these games, never has he done it in cold blood. Are you kidding me? I never realized how ridiculous that looks like from the outside. Not abandoning family, I suppose. We could go around. We got that option, but why would we do that? <laughs> Sam, no. <laughs> this game takes a much more mature tone. Nate just had to watch his brother get cut in half by bullets and forced to abandon him. We know he doesn't die here, but it for sure raises a lot of questions. It even made me sad a little bit, like he just died. Notice a subtle vignette around the screen as he loses Sam, highlighting the focus he now has on the pain of losing his brother. The more subdued Uncharted form is as beautiful as it is welcome in this game. It presents a maturity, not just in Nathan, but in Naughty Dog as a studio, allowing themselves and the character to grow just beyond the bombastic action game it once was, to shed what it means to be an Uncharted game and grow up with Nate and their players, all the while giving us a recap of all the previous games, reminding us of what it all took to get here. Ending with Nate and Elena, as these games have always been about them, at the end of the day, is just the cherry on top. No rust, right color. Maybe it hit the rocks, tore off before tumbling. Hey, you're mumbling. Either it's Nate's dejected feeling of mundane life making him mumble, or a holdover from yesteryears when he was putting together the pieces of a treasure knowing his companions could keep up. By my count, we're shy two crates. I'm gonna go round them up. Hold on. How about you come up first, get a fresh tank? Ah, the crate's gotta be... Ha! <laughs> Nate constantly refuses to come up for a fresh tank, and this normal life of his, playing chicken with his oxygen tank, is the only adrenaline rush he's able to get like back in the day. I was actually blown away when I realized it wasn't just a contextual command and I actually had to wrap the rope around the axle. And here we were thinking he was hunting another treasure. The perfect fake out gut punch to us that he's put that life behind him. And not wanting to wait for the ladder or nothing, trying to get it where he can. Wow, look at that. We struck copper. <laughs> and to keep the disappointment mounting, we find Jack in this hall. Naughty Dog does a great job juxtaposing Nate's past versus what many of us consider normal. The cynic in me almost wants to say this is Naughty Dog saying if we aren't living a life like Nate, we're losers. <laughs> I know that's not true. It's more so about developing their theme of living a passionate or dispassionate life. Doing what you need to do versus what you have to do. Did not get the permits. Can't no one get the damn permits. Of course not. But Nate, don't you see that works in our favor? No permits means no competition. The ship is ours. No permits means no go. And if we weren't sure that Nate put it all behind him, this is the nail in the coffin. No, no, no way. 
You are going with the others. Implying Jameson has approached Nate with other off the books jobs. He's declined. It's really neat to see that even though Nate put down the treasure hunter life, he didn't just throw it all away. Sure, it's tucked in the attic, but it's always there when he needs it. It's also somewhat of a walk down memory lane for us players. Yeah. I love the musical cue and tense score as Nate just shoots a pawn gun. It foreshadows their desire to have kids, but also that Nate is just a big kid himself in a sense. This is his gun that he got. And also that there's a pawn gun in his old holster. That's gotta mean something, right? It does. Symbolizes that Nate had finally put his psychopathic tendencies behind him and will forevermore only play beer pong. But not with Jameson. And of course, him playing like this shows his longing for the old life. Okay, fine. I'll say what you all are thinking. So you notice that Nate and Elena's house is quite cluttered. I don't want to say dirty because that's a whole different thing. They've lived a grand life so far and want to display it all over. And the menial tasks of putting clothes away and a dish here and there isn't the end of the world for them. I imagine being shot at many times might do that to somebody. Exploring the house, though, you can see so much detail put into it for just one chapter. This is what passion looks like from a developer. Doing all of this just to truly establish where a hero is starting in his journey. Ah, uh, yes. The biggest decision any adult must make in the afternoon. Either to booze it or lose it. Lose it, I implore you. How was your day? What? Huh? Got none of that. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. How was your day? This is so freaking charming. People tend to love scenes like this. Thinking Avengers Tower and Age of Ultron. Just seeing our heroes get to be like us for a moment is really refreshing to see. I know the feeling. I could watch them just be people for a whole game. Oh yeah, I feel that too. Just know that would eventually get boring as fuck. But I digress. Seeing these two sit down and try to have a normal conversation is as charming as it is somewhat sad to see. It's palpable how dissatisfied they are, but only half of the unit is trying to make it work. A uh, early 21st century truck we got. <laughs> Apparently the natives called it a semi. Don't tell me you hate your life without telling me you hate your life. About how rude the smog was that it was like shock to the lungs like the second that you got off the plane, so. I hate to admit it, but I've been there. <laughs> Either I'm planning out my work schedule or I'm thinking about the current game I'm hyper fixating on. Damn you, hell divers too. Again, we get the shrill of adventure, but it's not a calming sound. It's almost unnerving. Maybe a warning that though you want this, it's not good for you. Or better put, the way you go about this love of yours is unhealthy. Oh, okay. yeah. interesting. What's my article about? And the only way you could know the answer is if you actually cared to listen to your wife. All these are actually wrong. There are red herrings around the house that might inform some of these answers. Um, I felt very confident in mine because I found a magazine about Bangkok. Okay, I just don't want you to not take it because of me. I'm not taking it because of me, okay? Oof, this conflict here is as real as I've ever seen in a relationship. And trust me, I don't know. I've been in the same discussion before, lying like Nate is. Yeah, yeah, your little TV game thing. I bet I can beat your high score. Hey, role reversal. It's the man that doesn't understand the game this time. And learn. Oh, I'm learning, all right. I know for some of you that sound activated your monkey brain. Can we just talk about Naughty Dog got the controls right for their own game using the D-pad, but this PS1 has DualShock 2? Play Crash in my Uncharted game was not on my bingo card, let me tell you that. Hey, are you happy? Yeah, of course. Not a question you ever want to hear when you aren't. Not a question you ever want to hear if you are. But it's an interesting one because whether you're feeling either one, it goes to show that nobody really knows what each other is feeling unless explicitly told. Um. Um? <laughs> really? Elena's almost truth was assaged with a playful laugh to get away from telling him. Elena misses it just as much as Nate, but hides it way better. It's good to see you again, Nathan. The whistle! Right, Sam's very existence calls Nate. Start with the best part. Elena isn't an option here, and this isn't because he doesn't love his wife. He truly does. Though it seems framed that way that his addiction and passion for adventure outweighs that, but I don't believe it. He just found his brother being alive, and their entire lives are about treasure hunting. Talking about his wife isn't what Sam's trying to hear about right now. And yet another archaeological <laughs> gold mine, and somehow you managed to walk away with nothing. That, my friends, would be called lampshading. I'm married. I can't believe- uh, Elena, from the stories, that's my wife. You gotta come meet her. And when he realizes he didn't mention it, look how excited he gets. I can tell her all about you. Hey. Tell her all about you. 
And the sword cuts both ways. Nate is a very focused one-track mind. Not to say he's stupid because he's not, but when he's on something, he doesn't derail from it. Just look at how serious he's been about not doing illegal work, even with Elena's blessing. How can they be content with their small lives? Their miserable jobs? <laughs> I mean, they have wives to go home to. Realize that this is Sam creating this story from nothing. Alcazar saying this is actually Sam manipulating Nate right now, knowing his current place in life. A fortune, and I must seek my fortune. I like how he thinks. A lot of Alcazar's lines can just be swapped right in for Samuel. The dude survived multiple gunshot wounds, using that as a sign that he must pursue Avery's treasure to make something of this fortune. With how ostentatious Uncharted is already, Sam's story here really doesn't set off many alarm bells. I pretty much bought it until about halfway through the story when Naughty Dog really starts dropping some hints that maybe it is a cock and bull story. We go four chapters without shooting a gun, and I wasn't bored at all throughout that. That's pretty impressive and a testament to how good Naughty Dog's storytelling and traversal is. Now that's more like the Uncharted I know. But Alcazar also feels like a villain for Rafe. He bought him out with the intention of working together to find the treasure. The best lies are the ones rooted in truth. Not like Avery left some map with a big red X on it, okay? But I'm <laughs> making fun of the stereotypical pirate maps. Whatever's missing from the one in Panama is probably still inside this one. Mm -hmm. Okay, this will be the last time I win it because it happens constantly, but the adventure trill is such a neat bit of sound design. You might not even notice it if you weren't paying attention. There, there are plenty of other guys that are much more equipped to handle this kind of thing. Like who? Uh, anybody? Uh, Charlie Cutter. Hey, best character in Uncharted 3. Glad he's getting his little spotlight. Hey, hon, it's me. Hey. Yeah, uh, listen, you're not going to believe this. What? Jameson just walked in here with the permits. Like I was talking about earlier, it's always been treasure hunting and then finding his family. These two are colliding at the same time, and it's to save his brother's life. How could he say no? Nate thinks he can have his cake and eat it too, and just wants to please everybody. I've never seen Nate so relatable and so real before. Everything that he's done throughout this game so far has been so true to life, I keep catching myself saying, I get it. Yeah, I know, I know, but... Uh... It's like I'm going to take that Malaysia job after all. God, I love how somber his theme is as he lies to his wife. Is that a weird thing to love? Let's focus on Avery's cross, okay? No, you sure you don't want to pick up something for the wife? It's cute. Nolan North and Troy Baker have been dominant in the voice acting scene, especially in the 2010s, to the point that I've read a fatigue from them being in everything. And it's not even that they're bad in their roles, and that's why. They're just so good they get every role. Hearing these two legendary voice actors bounce off each other throughout this game was a treat, and I would have been remiss not to mention it. Notice that Nate has got his overalls a bit unzipped while Sam doesn't. Shows how out of practice Nate is in the game. Huge understanding. But I trust him, all right? He's family. And, no, 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 no. Talk about putting your foot in your mouth. After years of not being together with Sam, not feeling like his family to his own brother is something we're going to see him struggle with. It's why this line digs at him the way it does. Let's try to keep the tux clean. A, the life of a thief almost feels suffocating for Nate. I've seen that Nate took the offer to save his brother because it was a perfect excuse to get back in the game, evidenced by how much he enjoys it. You can still enjoy something and know it's not right for you. Watch this. I'm watching. I, uh... I missed. Gotta love emergent dialogue that pokes fun at the bad player. Like me. The best quality of life addition to Uncharted 4 is the little things that make me jump to my death less common. Like Nate reaching out when a ledge is able to be grabbed. The little things that you miss the most. Like what? Pulling from The Last of Us, we've got the optional conversations. It's quite obvious after The Last of Us, Naughty Dog wanted to transition into the AAA moving single player story space. They were able to take a series with great characters, with no more story or plot ever behind them, and create a narrative that is actually stronger because those previous games are so bombastic and crazy. Riding the motorcycle? My god, does he get more than he bargained for with that later on. Nathan? Nathan? What? Sloppy, Nate, sloppy! Nobody cares if you smoke indoors. You're just as beautiful as the day I left you. I hope damn well I age as good as Sully. They changed the lot order. Take a whole pile of cash to make that happen. Great foreshadowing. It's act like you never spend time in prison. If you want something dirty done, then you wait for, for lights, lights out. out. <laughs> Nothing brings men together like a bit of jail time. I've heard too many funny stories from my late friend June about the weird relationships he made while in a short time there. 
Level items like this still show up like a freaking PS2 game. Hi, Victor. Hello, Nadine. Jesus, just that voice alone gets my panties dropping. These two are so hot together. I ship it. The attention to detail that Naughty Dog employs in this game. Every space feels so lived in. Besides a few combat arenas, every location feels like it really exists. None of that gamey feeling. Don't suppose you brought a... Yeah, that'll do. Oh, is he trying to replace Sully? Because that's what it feels like. And the closer Sully is to date, the less Sam can control. Just subliminally telling Nate that he's just like Sully. Or am I thinking too hard about it? I like that this door is missable and possibly not even interactable. It's the little things like this in gameplay that make our allies feel real and dynamic. Oh, we're in Rome. Nah, because we're in Italy. Took my win from me! <laughs> <laughs> what was that cut? I love it. Aren't you running your parents' business? My business now. I think Rafe has a bad case of little man syndrome. Which is why you really need someone watching your back in a place like this. I love the blocking of Nadine joining Rafe on this line. It cues the audience and Soli in on their allegiance. We get to figure it out before they tell us, which always makes me feel a little cool. And it doubles as a threat from her to Soli if he wants to get in their way. Had me worried there for a minute, Victor. Thought I might have to kill you. Jesus Christ, the best lies are in truth. Always a fan of the bad guy wearing a white suit thinking themselves all pure. Much like The Last of Us, we finally get some more dedicated stealth. Something that Uncharted has been slow to adopt and innovate. Bushes help immensely. It makes stealth 10 times less frustrating, albeit easy. Oh no, a fit, highly trained woman in her 30s is able to beat a man in his 40s with no conventional combat training, who's been out of the game for quite some time, whose biggest exercise is diving missions. How could this be? Yes, generally, whoever is heavier and stronger wins. Nate is that based on genetics, but Nadine knows how to use his weight, lack of speed, age, and skill against him, waiting for him to come to her before counterattack. And anyone that throws out only haymakers is surely going to get punished for it. Think about in Tekken when you find a combo that ends in a low that you spam. Eventually the enemy catches on and blocks low. <laughs> now that's what we signed up for in an Uncharted game. In paradise. Today you will join me in paradise. So I've noticed a lot of parallels between Jim Jones and Henry Avery throughout this game. If you don't know of Jim Jones, I'm sure you've heard of the Jonestown Massacre. I've got some links down below if you want to learn more about that fascinating topic of the cult of Jim Jones. But he believed he could reject all society and create his very own utopia or paradise with him at the center of it all, just as Avery attempts. I'll continue to describe the parallels as we continue. How is Elena cool with all this? Oh, Jesus, kid. Look, it's just not that simple. Look, with all that you two have been through together. She wouldn't understand this. You are not giving her enough credit. <sighs> Sully is such a good dad right now, especially after the last conversation we saw between them. And he was giving Nate the lowdown on where true greatness is derived from. This is quite reminiscent of that. Oh, the reception is lousy. Yeah. Wanted to keep his focus, but more importantly, not accepting a drink from the man that he blames pulling Nate off course, putting him's son in danger. Something on your mind, dear? Oh, I would have slapped the shit out of him for being so patronizing to my wise, experienced ass. It's not exactly the same, but this is pretty damn close to the plane we saw at the end of Uncharted 3, so I'm gonna say it's the same one. Nice to see some payoff with it. I'm pretty sure he'd had enough of me. I was still- You can see my childlike joy spark up when I notice their footprints. The tessellation and debris is off the charts in this game. It really seems like game fidelity really peaked back in 2016 to 2019. Now, the only improvements we're seeing is 4K resolution become the norm and facial animations keep incrementally getting better. Uncharted 4 is a treat to look at, especially when we get that Jeep. There are some jaw-dropping locales I can't wait to talk about. The slides are a pretty nifty way of adding some much-needed anxiety to the perfect climber that Nathan Drake is. So the combat here in Uncharted 4 is pretty much the combat we've grown accustomed to in the previous games. It's just more refined, the smooth version of it, with the added benefit of the rope being dope as fuck. What's really fun compared to the older games is the sheer verticality present in fights now. This is made especially clear in Libertalia, where you don't know where the f*** you're getting shot from. What if it's the only thing holding the tunnel up? Then I'll apologize. <laughs> Nate has always been a smartass, but I don't think he's ever been as funny as he is in 4. Oh, picking up. How's it looking? We're about to head into the cave. I'm still impressed with the little detail of Nate picking up the radio before responding. It's on RDR2 levels of animation detail. Yeah. A little slimy. No, I've heard that before. Uh, I lose my hand? So we'll get you a nice hook. Ah, because they're searching for private treasure. 
I had to know about St. Dismas, whom I bet Avery and all of his crew were intimately familiar with. Uncharted 4 really shines at having something for our characters to constantly talk about between gameplay bits. Like, these two boys never shut up. And through their discussions, we actually end up learning a lot about Avery and the entire backstory behind him and Libertalia. The platforming is also so much more engaging this time around. It's nothing complex, and you're never stumped on how to progress, but it does get the good old noodle working. Hey, Nadine was kind of right. By not following Rafe's plans and going more scorched earth, she arrived exactly where Nate did, who was doing it the right way. At almost every turn, Rafe is shown up by everyone around him. We're rich. Jesus. Suppose it's a start. Soli, you did ask them to bring you back something shiny. Sony just can't help themselves with these first party studio products placement, can they? This Jeep has got to be the coolest thing ever. The way it handles, how the tires need actual traction to climb up it, the cable, it all just feels so realistic. Naughty Dog did so much work on this thing, only for it to appear in three levels. Now, that's what I call dedication. Then the Jeep turning into another tool to use for puzzling around the world is just so much fun. It really speaks to Drake's nature of getting by with only what he has. Like seriously guys, driving this thing through water? Like I want a 4x4 now just because of this game, which brings me to a greater point. Doesn't this game just inspire you to go out and do something? After finishing it, I really just wanted to get out of the house, go camping and swim in a river. Just me? Rain might be muddy. Oh, <laughs> Even Nate's Jeep can't get away from the everything breaks on him curse. This is where I really wanted to talk about just how incredible this game looks. Seeing this vista alone was quite breathtaking, but what really eats my ass is that everything we're seeing is in the level. We drive all the way over this view. This isn't some open world game, and yet right here, it feels like so. I always catch myself with linear games saying they didn't have to do this. With a linear game, you know the genre you're playing for. People would not be upset if there wasn't a huge exploratory area to drive your Jeep around, but it adds so much value to the feeling of being our treasure hunter Drake, driving around trying to figure it out. It's really impressive. Wowie, wow, even the freaking cable has a hitbox. No panic. Don't panic. I guess something very Uncharted hasn't happened in a while. This was so cool. Uncharted has always wanted us to be in control of Nate during the set pieces. And gosh, it's so just cool having to do it ourselves. I need to know who's creating these Jeeps. This thing goes through hell and still runs. I push a button, pull something. I try pulling Dismas's dick. I don't know what it is about this market, but I really buy into it. I've played too many games and generally can feel out hollowness of an area and just see it as the set dressing it is. But here, I love it. So detailed and so much going on. Hey, Sully. <laughs> hey, he stole my apple. Can't trust anyone these days. This must be foreshadowing, right? Totally about Sam. Yes, yes. I'm so good at analyzing games. The entire clock tower sequence is hands down the highlight of this game, managing to bring together all elements of the game in such a cohesive, fun way. We finally have some platforming that takes a bit more problem solving, a puzzle underneath that makes you work for the answer and utilize the journal in a manner that doesn't just give you the answer, plus the crazy stupid spectacle of the bell crashing down and Nate just making it out unscathed. It's uncharted firing on all cylinders and I freaking love it. The second act of this game cooks really hard. I was gonna be real upset if Nate didn't learn his lesson on these bells. You really feel the scale of this tower when you're falling down it. Makes you realize just how high we really did climb. <laughs> For a second, we think we're in the clear and it just keeps going. It's almost like the freaking train wreck sequence in COD World War II. Oh, sh At least I got the door open though, huh? Yeah, if you go to the Nadine school of treasure hunting. This puzzle is pretty great. It builds us up slowly on how it works and keeps adding another layer of complexity to it. We start with what Nate knows, then he reaches out to his brother for help, and that gets us through the next section. Then the final one, the room has damage and Sam doesn't know the pirates, so it's up to us to deduce what the final sigil is and figure it out. Probably the least hand-holdy puzzle in all of Uncharted. In the end, all that matters is who gets to Avery's treasure first. <laughs> well, that sounds like a bet. There's some drama about how this story came to be the way it is, and we'll talk about that later, but our villain here is so much better than any in Uncharted, and it's because of that drama that it's the case. Most of the game, we're expecting to have a reunion with Alcazar, and he will be our main villain, and Rafe just an antagonist, maybe even return to the light by the end. The constant checkups with Rafe gives him the screen time he needs to develop his desire for the treasure and his relationship with Nate. With them being partners in the past as well, it makes for much juicy storytelling than some suit in his grandma. Just like earlier, we get to freaking drive through all of this. Ah, so this is why the market was so detailed, getting it ready for a shootout. Smart. Hats off to the designers of this level. This segment is linear, but has no distinct arrows on where we should be going. We just have Sully telling us to go downhill, the truck subtly guiding us down the way we're meant to go. 
add on a couple alternate routes we could take, and we've got a super immersive organic feeling chase scene. Now, this is the same level we played in Uncharted 2 and 3, but it's on steroids. When I figured out we can commandeer enemy jeeps and then start driving them, it blew my mind. This entire level is a masterclass in playable set pieces. All of the game mechanics we've learned up to this point are put into play and makes for a bit of a playground for us to just have fun in, which is the core ethos of Uncharted at the end of the day. It just so happens 4 has a really good story to boot. Feels like quite the callback to Uncharted 2, don't it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad we got some normal people to juxtapose these insane assholes who just ruined a city. <laughs> My jaw literally hit the floor when this happened. Naughty Dog has been setting us up hard for this moment with all of Nate's lies. I'm sure there's been nights where you've parted out with the boys too long to find out your girl has been pissed at you all along. Yeah, this might be a little higher scale and stakes, but it's the same relatable concept, which is what I love about this story. Between the ancient treasures, the explosions, the beautiful lost city, the most enthralling thing about it is the story of a marriage under threat of falling apart. Died in a Panamanian Nate. jail. Gosh, Elena recoiling from Nate kills me. It's not as if he'd done something conventionally terrible, like murder someone. Uh, oh, uh, well, you know what I mean. Or involved in some rich islander cabal. He just lied to his wife. And the weight put on it is so, so powerful. Trust is the number one thing in a relationship, and to see her almost fall back in fear of being hurt more by Nate, like she doesn't even recognize him, makes for one of the most powerful scenes present. Was there ever a Malaysia job? <laughs> I... Then cue her fiddling with her ring as everything she thought this marriage was built on is falling apart. That is both oh! Nate. You just didn't have the nerve to face me again. I, I knew you would react like this. Oh boy, did Nate choose his words terribly. I'm ashamed to admit I see a lot of my former self and Nate in this game, and geez, is the mirror hard to look at. I understand where his head is at, that the path of least resistance raises all boats, when it's always better just to clear the air. Often from what i found is the reaction we expect from people isn't the one we dreamed up in our head. For all the hate Neil Druckmann gets for his writing and ego, I believe he really understands people in relationships, and it shows. He managed to take what were good characters with traits and puddle deep complexities and fully realize them, utilizing all the context of the previous games in meaningful ways. I'm me. Come on, it's me. <sighs> you hear that beautiful music beneath the scene? This is Nate and Elena's theme, for better or worse. And my God, does it rival the main Uncharted theme? I'm saying maybe there's a smarter way to save Sam. Such as? Such as we give him a new identity. Nate's marriage is put on the same pedestal as Sam's life to Sully. That speaks volumes to just how much he cares for the two of them. Hey, you want to be helpful, Sullivan? Go keep an eye on her. Ugh, watching Nate push away the only real family he's known in recent times for blood is hard to watch. Knowing that Sam didn't want any of this, but isn't trying to stop it. His nature has always been clear since we saw him as a kid breaking A at Nate. He was always going to bring Nate down to his level, which makes for the younger brother becoming the bigger arc the later half of the game so enticing. To step back and appreciate just how far we've come. Huh? Sick pop is magnet. The Drake brothers quote Francis, the quote which was inscribed on the ring which Nate symbolically let Ubar swallow to show his growth. Now he lost Sully and Elena because of Sam, who is framing what they've done as a victory, whereas all Nate has done to this point is regress. We're watching a toxic relationship unfold right in front of our eyes. Family can be one of the biggest blind spots of our lives. And notice they're on a boat, just like how Elena and Nate were together at the start of the first game. Sam is almost replacing his family at this point. A hand on the nape of one's neck and directing generally symbolizes power and control over another. Just a neat detail on an offhand moment displaying Sam's hold on Nate as of now. More praise for the puzzles. Never so complex I feel like a rug rat could figure it out, nor do I need to know the first 30 digits of pi to get it. These trials were meant for pirates after all. Just hard enough to feel satisfied. I didn't get the feeling that our friend was a bit of a narcissist. So it's been a while since I've talked about how the two brothers mirror Avery in two. Sam is Avery, narcissistic, greedy, self-important. He literally lied to Nate, and even watching Nate's marriage fall apart doesn't come clean. Then Nate being two, the man who goes along with Avery and eventually comes to his senses and betrays him, just as Nate does in his own way, forcing him to give up the treasure and leave. Let us not forget that two, also a family man who cared very much for his wife. What? I said okay. No, 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 no. Your okays are never just okay. It usually means the opposite of okay. Gosh, can a story just let people fight? It's always got to be broken up by something so the tension can stew a little longer. 
If you ever get a moment like this in your own story and don't know where to go, just force them to stop talking about it by an outside force. Works every time. It's frustrating to be moving slow as Nate, but places us right with him in his own frustration. Also, Naughty Dog created all new animation just for a couple minutes of Nate being exhausted. Now, this thing is the tits, making me feel like Cal Custis on these walls. One of the few times Nate's cross draw actually is practical. Hold on, man. I mean, what are we doing? What do you mean? Does this scene feel familiar? The wiser adventurer tells the plucky guy with something to prove that maybe this isn't the smartest idea? That's because it is. This is the same conversation Sully had with Nate in 3 after the burning of the chateau. Though Nate is trying to regress Nate, Sully's teachings are still in there. I put on the line to get you here? How about what I put on the line? Okay? The last 15 years of my this life. This has nothing to do with that! I probably would have hit Sam if you said that to me. Weaponizing my own guilt to get what he wants? Hell no, and after figuring out he lied, it really makes every action he does in hindsight more unforgivable. If this wasn't an Uncharted game and wanted a darker tone, I could almost guarantee Sam would be an antagonist. I mean, he almost already is. So we finally made it to Libertalia, and you're probably sitting there not thinking, I wonder when he's gonna make his Jim Jones comparisons. And I'm glad you aren't. Jim Jones thought himself as a prophet. He'd never say it, but yeah. He used the perception he cultivated of himself of seeing visions to convince his congregation to journey out to Brazil to save them from nuclear disaster, going through hell to erect a town with not much outside help and creating a cult of personality for People's Temple. The town soon enough fell to ruin through infighting and poor management from Jones, and that's putting it lightly. And him pretty much going mad, he thought the only way out was to kill everyone through poison drinks. We see the same exact thing with Avery using the perception of himself as a figurehead, fighting for freedom and liberty to gain other pirates' favor, moving them all out to the jungle to erect an oppressive town, like, <laughs> like pirates made this, to only go mad and poison everyone he brought with him. To say Libertalia was inspired by the Jonestown Massacre would be putting it light. Founders of Libertalia, all marked with the word thief. Not murderer, not tyrant, thief. And thieves will be thieves, no honor among them, right? Sam's lie? I'm talking about Sam's lie. Giving me big God of War vibes with this Paul out making Nate look small. Uh, you know, some things just speak for themselves. And that's why you don't cross draw people. Nadine is a trained professional and knows how to capitalize on this weakness. I'm not falling for that again. Speaking of falling, watch out! Watch out! I do have to admit, these brothers could do a lot better in the working together department. But the choreo is pretty good at showing us that Nadine knows how to handle a gang fight. Oh, don't worry about him, Nadine. These guys don't kill anyone in cold blood. It's just not their style. Told you! I warned you. Do it! <laughs> My god, he was gonna kill her. I'll give him that. He's not a kill say a good guy. Hector Alcazar died in a shootout in Argentina like six months ago. I had a suspicion by now that Sam wasn't telling the truth. And after playing so many stories, it seemed like the perfect plot twist. And booyah. I really like that Rafe is the one to break the news. It's like... There is still a part of him that is partners with them. He for sure respects them, and I'd like an antagonist that seems to appreciate the heroes to a degree. Huh? We have The Last of Us left behind at home. Oh, Cassandra Morgan's boys. Morgan? Like Henry Morgan? Mm, these guys had pirated them all along. Of all her discovery, this would have been her crowning achievement. Talk about Avery's treasure. This one scene recontextualizes Sam's desire for the treasure quite a bit. Finding the treasure is a way for him to honor his late mother, to have her be alive through him in some way. Mom's unfinished work. This is our chance to restart our lives. But of course, it's still a vehicle to prove themselves and their father who abandoned them wrong that they are worth something. Sam's arc is pretty much what Nate went through in the previous games. And now we're seeing Sam be his own Sully, guiding him. Sam may be the older brother, but he's got a lot to learn from Nate. Random aside, I like how low-key Elena's ring is. Being an adventurer herself, I'm sure it's just subconscious to pick out a ring that wouldn't snag on things. <sighs> Sam made it all up. What an asshole, right? Speaking directly about himself to Elena. Be known as a guy who only got rich because of his inheritance. Walking away isn't an option for him. Blaine got involved in a couple of civil wars that didn't pan out for them. Nadine inherited her father's mess. They both have information about the opposition. Hmm, it's like they work well together or something. <laughs> That smile right there. You can see that she just missed the adrenaline pumping adventure just a smidge. Again, this game is gorgeous. On the PS4 too. That's insane to me. And there are grumblings about a PS5 bro? Like guys, we don't need it. Let the devs figure out how to push the tech they have now instead of just throwing more power at them. 
True quality, innovation, and polish comes from restrictions. We are reaching a tipping point where games are so expensive it takes so long to make. What's even the point of more powerful hardware if we only get one game every four to six years that they can even use it? You've heard this all over, but it's been four years into this generation and it barely feels like it started. Oh, where was I? Uh, Uncharted Pretty. You said you almost didn't come back. Well, I couldn't leave when you were clearly in over your head. The entire time we spend with Elena until we abandon the treasure is about seeing the two of them reconnect on what they both love to do. When they do this together, they are unstoppable. And through this, they are rekindling their marriage. And I'm not just talking about forgiving Nate's life. They were clearly unhappy in their normal lives. We can work through it together as a team. I know that. Really, I do. It's just... Nate struggles to find the words. He's not ready to admit that this life is what he yearns for. That this is him. He wants to be good for her and live a life that fulfills him, and he's struggling to reconcile those two. But even more so, how do you put into words the things that mean the most to you in life? It's through action that you can really tell somebody something. Lenny sees this in him and herself going through Libertalia. We have the longest stretch of silence where the music becomes the focal point of the scene. We're set to just contemplate, like Nate and Elena, what they are going through and what it's all worth. All while hearing their gorgeous theme and seeing the beautiful land of Libertalia. Their silence is almost deafening and it is a beautiful showcase of less is more. <sighs> I might just have a crush on Elena. Who wouldn't? That's why I probably noticed this. But seeing the way her cheeks expand on woo is just... <sighs> Naughty Dog is best in class for facial animation. Nate's skeleton in previous games only had up to 250 bones. His face alone has up to 800 and I'm sure that's consistent with all our leads. It's just incredible. I guess I was... Uh protecting myself, you know? We have a lot of ground to cover. Notice how Elena's eyes are darting around. They aren't meeting Nate's as he's saying all this. Remember the conversation on the couch when Nate asked if she was happy? Nate lied and she changed the subject to avoid lying, but in doing so was protecting herself just as Nate did with his lie. She's seeing herself in Nate's actions and slowly realizing she's done the same thing in a way. Her overcorrection into normalcy is a factor that propelled Nate into lying to her and him getting back in the game. There's maybe even a hint of guilt in her. I'm not saying she is to blame and he shouldn't have lied, but it just goes to show how layered and real these characters are. And it's all on a subtextual level. We never hear Elena confess anything like this such as Nate. And it's just because she doesn't have to. Between the writing, the directing, and incredible animation, we learn all of this about her. And the cherry on top is, all of this has happened because of the basic fact of them loving each other so much. They're holding on so tightly that they can't be who they really are. Some structural problems and water damage. Yeah, clearly some drainage issues. A real fixer-upper opportunity. <laughs> They're bonding! After you. Oh, how sweet. You want me to be your decoy? <laughs> There's no chivalry when it comes to adventuring, especially when they're on the same level as each other. Uncharted 4 really learned from our dissatisfaction with the previous three games. Yes, we find another lost city, but this time around, Naughty Dog doesn't wait until the final hour of the game to give it to us. We get to spend almost half of the game exploring and experiencing all the Battalia has to offer. And they all perished in an instant at this very table. I'm, so, I'm sorry. I, uh... It's okay. God damn these two. As Nate realizes what he's doing again, he apologizes, and we hear a trill of, for better or worse, come into accent. It. So, since our missing hosts aren't here at Two's Manor. And Elena is learning to meet Nate where he's at, along with understanding. It's not wrong to want it. I move my treasure through the passage to my ship. Two and Avery turned on each other. You can also look at Avery and Two as Rafe and Sam, respectively, as Nate got out of the game long before the Bravery. Rafe wants the whole treasure for himself, and Sam realizing that Rafe is going about everything in the wrong way and betrays him. I'm just a little preoccupied with not blowing up right now. And unclench. That got the stupidest little chuckle out of me. Do it. <laughs> you see? See, as they're trusting each other again, they get wrapped up in each other. Just a little visual metaphor to show how much closer they're growing. Lena, come on. Lena. Uh, my hero. <laughs> oh no, you didn't do that. Goddamn heart attack. Oh, let me listen. <sighs> these two have so much chemistry. Romantic scenes are normally whatever for me, but these two are irresistible to watch. Anyone ever tell you you have a funny idea of romantic? Yeah, yeah, I may have heard that somewhere before. And Nate's comment to me is them coming to terms that what works for them 
what their version of love is doesn't have to fit the mold of what is expected of them. So we never get to sail giant ships. So fighting in a ship graveyard is the next coolest thing, completely with ship boarding and everything. We scuttled every last ship on this island. You know why? Because he was hell bent on keeping his treasure. Exactly. No matter the cost to the others around him. More every parallels. Elena with the assist for my win. No offense to these guys, but they don't get it. Speaking to this treasure being everything their life's work has been building up to, to finish their mother's work. Actually, Sam, they do. They really do. Okay. <laughs> I went to the same exact thing with you, Nate. It's not fair. Huh? Doing the dishes, we take turns. <laughs> Love a callback. Hell, I'd say he's earned it. God knows you didn't. Or we can finish what it is that we've <laughs> Oh hell yeah, Ray finally getting his just desserts. A Thieves' End, an ominous subtitle for this game that could mean many things. It's about Rafe meeting his end, Nate moving on from this life laterally, Avery's craze, but most importantly, the closing chapter for Nate. Relax, he's alive. Well, this idiot nearly got us all killed. From Rafe's track record, something tells me that it was actually him that triggered the trap that got Sam stuck, but it's greatly in line with this character to lie about such things. How noble of you, but no. We stay here any longer and we're all dead. Just like the pirates of yore, Rafe's greed and desire to prove himself is leading him to repeat history, learning nothing from him. And you know, can you blame Rafe? It's likely his dumbass didn't know squat about Avery's history, so these do. And interesting that Nate must confront who he was in Uncharted 3 through his brother and through Rafe. Both Rafe and Sam desperately want to prove themselves for different reasons. Yet Nate knows that's not where the satisfaction will lie. Right from the start, you took advantage of my generosity. You tried to cut me out, and it's high time you learn. He's actually not wrong. They both did. Nate in the prison was questioning why Rafe is along, and Sam abandoned him to find Nate. They both together helped form who Rafe has become in this game, due to their naive past. I don't know as much about history as you boys, but I've got a pretty good idea who those two are. Well, enlighten us. It's Avery and two. See, he really didn't know the story. He has no clue he's falling in the same trappings as Avery. The three boys all take turns swapping in and out of who is Avery and who is two. By the end, Rafe is Avery and Nate too, betraying his captain who lost sight of everything he was for some riches. I'm not going to be able to enjoy one of these coins, knowing that you and your worthless brother are still sucking here. Nate and Rafe explore the really fun theme of old money versus new money and how that molds who we become. Nate has had to work for everything he has and has a greater appreciation for everything he's been given. Rafe, on the other hand, recognizes he's been handed everything, but doesn't want to be seen as a trust fund baby. He wants to make a name for himself, which is admirable. And what makes him a great antagonist is that his goals are completely understandable for us, but he just takes it one step too far. His inferiority complex clouds his judgment, and though he doesn't want to be seen as the trust fund baby, he relies on it too greatly to the point of it not even being his accomplishment anyway for finding Avery's treasure. He just doesn't have the sauce like Nate and Sam have, and that's okay. Not everyone needs to be good at the same things, but please y'all, don't go shoot other people because Timmy beat you to Halo. And Rafe is really only a product of the entire game's script being rewritten. It's said that after some Naughty Dog drama, Neil Druckmann took over and threw out eight months worth of work on the script and started his own. I can only imagine what the old script was, probably working akin to what we've grown to expect with the previous games. But hot off the heels of The Last of Us, Neil was on a spur of creating more human stories, and I'd say that's a big reason why Uncharted 4 turned out such a human, relatable story. With a villain who we can understand and sympathize with. A villain that's actually fleshed out. And I'm not just talking about Rafe. He's the external conflict that gets the plot moving, who has his own great story of not being able to change and let go, but then there is the other villain of the story that most of the drama lies around, which is the internal conflict of Nate feeling stuck between his family and struggling to navigate the situation to save his brother and keep his promise to Elena while also living the life that he desperately desires for. There is so much more going on character-wise than the last three games combined, and I love it. This boss fight isn't great, but what Uncharted boss fight has really been all that? The fight pretty much plays itself, and that's fine, because the heart of the matter here is the story's climax that deserves all of our attention. Underneath all the bravado, you're just a sad little boy with delusions of grandeur. Talk about the pot calling the kettle black. <laughs> the framing here is perfect for setting up the fastest Chekhov's gun in the West. That's kind of dark, don't you think, Naughty Dog? 
Nate finally becomes the pirate captain, leading the way and shooting cannons. Also, using the water to lift the wood is so freaking smart. I wouldn't have thought about that in a million years. No more late night phone calls about one last time. <laughs> Gosh, it's so rare for a character story to end nowadays. Everything is so profit driven. Nate got out at the perfect time. Sure, we would love to see another story with Nate, Elena, and Sully, but it's just as satisfying knowing that his story is over and has a happily ever after. And just like with Lost Legacy, if they want, Uncharted doesn't have to be stuck to Nate. They could use anyone to lead these adventure games. An experience getting to meet you. With the handshake? Well, <laughs> Bring it in for the real thing, sister. I feel you, Sam. I'm a hugger. And like, let's just not talk about how you lied about a drug lord giving you three months to live. Forgive and forget. This is still an Uncharted game after all. Can't get too heavy. Feeling of emptiness. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, as thrilling as the next adventure might be, in the end, I always left with that same feeling. And sometimes you just gotta choose what you're gonna keep and what you're gonna let go. What a good way for Nate to say goodbye to his own franchise. Quando seu marido volta para casa? What's that mean? How long before your husband gets home? <laughs> I think I could get behind a game with these two. Hey, is this for real? Nate, all you need to know is that you'd be making a very wise investment. He gets to have his cake and eat it too with Jameson Marine. Still adventure, do crazy things, but legally. Along with all the new camera gear? This is such a perfect ending, just as they started. Elena with the camera and Nate adventuring. This time though is actually what Elena expects instead of, you know, killing pirates right away. I think in our attempt to lead a normal life, we may have oversteered. Just as I was talking about earlier, this is Elena's way of apologizing. I missed the adventure. I missed us. They fell in love constantly being shot at. That's what they know as them. Which isn't to say that people can't grow or change for the better or out of necessity, but for them, it's exactly what they need to respark their marriage. And something tells me it could be more than just adventuring together, but they need to be doing it together. What do you say, Nathan Drake? Sure, why not? Ooh, he's accepting this, but damn, can you see a bit of sorrow in his eye? This is the compromise that keeps them together, and then being together is more important than finding lost cities. But that doesn't mean he isn't allowed to miss it, and just through one look, you can tell he's gonna. I'm gonna have my hands full with the camera. Well, I'm gonna have my hands full with all the diamonds. Sounds like y'all gonna need another set of hands. Oh, and they ended up buying the dog you mentioned wanting to Sully. Oh, and they had a kid. That's pretty cool. It's always gotta be a trio, doesn't it? In case you weren't sure, it's theirs. Cassie get the Uncharted theme. And that is totally Elena's kid. I don't see much of Nate in there, but it's pretty neat to see that. Yeah, that's Elena. They freaking moved to a beachfront. Now, that was as shocking to me as the end of 50 First Dates. Oh, they're old and still freaking hot. I think I'm old enough to know about it, right? Old enough. How old are you again? I'm only 24, born in 2000 of all years. So like, I should never forget how old I am. And I have, Nate is dead serious here. You want to continue the story? I say we do it on the water. How freaking cool would it be for Nate and Elena to be your parents? And they have a sailboat. This girl's gonna have the best life ever. Uh, what a final shot to end this series. All of Nathan's family with their motto. Seeing how far Nate has come since the first game is pretty great. From kind of a one dimensional character to a fully realized man with a wife and kid. These games are a bit more challenging with one through three being so skimp on theme and story, but damn, have I been eating good with Uncharted 4. This marks another end to another great series in the channel. We're really starting to collect the library here on Gaming Wins, aren't we? One day you'll be able to come here to the channel and find any of your favorite games covered here. At least that's the goal. And keep doing this as long as I can for as long as I have the smallest inkling of passion and love for it. And that's where I want to focus on this conclusion. Everything in Nate's life has been driven by those two things. His love for his mother and brother, i.e. family, and his passion for adventure. In Uncharted 3, it was looked at as obsession. Here in 4, we see that it was never really about that. Nate is one of the few people in this world that knows what he wants out of life and has never been afraid to go for it until he fell in love with Elena and couldn't stand the idea of losing her for a second time. That's the family angle. Balancing that can be one of the hardest things we do in this life. Then throw in Sam, literal blood to muddy the waters, and smartly the writers put Nate in an impossible choice. Uncharted 4 to me is a game about a man who wants to have it all but must learn what things to let go because you just can't. Rafe is Nate's foil. It's who he would be if there was no one else to temper him. Sully's wisdom, Elena's pragmatism, and Sam. Well, he's the devil on the shoulder that helps Nate give into his worst impulses. Rafe had it all, and it still wasn't enough. He was unable to let go of the crushing feeling that he was living in a shadow of Nate, of his family, of his own insecurities, and it got him killed. If I could sum up what the whole of Uncharted is about, in one word, I'd say obsession. 
maybe even spells it out for us when he's trying to dissuade Sam from going back to the treasure that Elena and Sully have seen before in Nate and had to reel him back in. Obsession is generally accepted as the guiding theme for Uncharted 4 and the series as a whole, but I want to offer my thoughts. Obsession is generally thought of in a negative context, but it doesn't have to be. All it really means is that your mind is consumed with one thing, and that can be beautiful. It's about recognizing the obsession and guiding those feelings with a deft hand and not letting it consume your whole being. Whether you're obsessed with something or someone, you can't make it your whole personality. That's when it becomes unhealthy. We can see that happen to Rafe, to Sam, and almost to Nate in 3. It's up to Nate to fill the shoes of Sully and teach both of them that there is more than just this. And in that pirate ship, we're offered the two sides of coming out of obsession. Sam learning to control and guide it healthily, abandoning Avery's treasure and going under Sully's wing, and Rafe, who couldn't let go of the treasure, of which symbolically consumes him. Like, the dude just disappears. <laughs> Nate the Great is pretty good at magic on. This story has so many layers to it, and it is so much better the longer you look at it. You can just watch this as another Uncharted game with dumb fun, but the game makes special efforts to make sure you're paying attention and care about what Nate and the gang are going through. And this story is only possible because, sadly, some of the team that worked on 1-3, through 3, including director Amy Hemming, were forced out and their script gutted and retooled. Eight months of work down the drain and everything about the game changing. This sent ripples throughout Naughty Dog and created one of the worst crunches in their history. Most of the Naughty Dog staff left after shipping Uncharted 4. And because of this, and because of more staff leaving during The Last of Us Part 2, Naughty Dog is seemingly going the way of Rocksteady being a ship of Theseus. The name of it is the same, but the team that it's composed of are all changed out. And it sucks that this blemish lies on the game and so many others. I don't often talk about this kind of stuff on this channel because boring and negative, right? But it's important to mention, especially with development timelines getting longer and longer, I don't think we're going to see crunch go away, even if publishers say they've stopped. All's to say, it's important to know how our games are made. I know there isn't much we can do but vote with our wallets, but we must be informed to do so. Great art is hard to make, even harder when deadlines and money is behind it. If only we could all just create and only release a project when it's ready. Let me tell you, if I could take all the time I wanted on a video until it was perfect, you'd probably maybe get one video every two months, which is impossible. So what does all this have to do with Uncharted 4? It's a game about obsession and how we cope with that. I could be obsessed with YouTube and bang out 10 videos a month, but that would lead the rest of my life to suffer. The team at Naughty Dog were forced to be obsessed with Uncharted 4, and now many of them don't even want to work for Naughty Dog anymore. Pick and choose your battles. Fight the ones that really matter, like Nate did with Atlanta, and let go of the ones that don't, like Avery's treasure. Remember everyone, drive the speed limit, drink some water, and one love another. If you enjoyed this video, click on the left to see my other Uncharted videos, or on the right to get that good, good YouTube randomizer. Peace, everybody.